So if you haven't checked out this book right here called The Walking Miracle by Ryan Shazir, you should definitely check it out. It essentially talks about his time, his recovery after being paralyzed, a spinal cord injury in a game in 2017, and his kind of recovery process. Great book. In this video today, we're going to talk about that. What's up guys, Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't wanna miss them. For those that are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Antonio Webb. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon here in San Antonio, Texas. So, I just recently finished reading this book, Walking Miracle. Great book, really, really inspiring book and also story. And if you guys haven't heard about Ryan Shazir, he was a linebacker for the Pittsburgh Steelers and had an injury uh, during a game in 2017 and was essentially paralyzed. And now he's walking again. So what exactly happened? What did I learn from this book? What did I take away from it? Well, let's check out that clip from 2017. Joe Mixon is looking on from the sideline right now. Hey, let's go. On second and five, plenty of time for Dalton. We're short of the first down on the catch by the rookie, Josh Malone. That's a that's a that's a big hit, and as you can see, when he was going for the hit, he kind of had his head in a sort of flex position, and um, which can be very dangerous. The neck has a lot of important structures. The spinal canal, the spinal column itself is meant to absorb load. All the discs that are the cushions between the spine, that's what they're meant to, that they're meant to absorb load. So if you hit something, uh, hopefully your, your, your discs will absorb some of, that, um, some of that power and that energy. Well, in certain instances or certain times where that energy can go somewhere else. And if it goes to the bone, it's gonna fracture the bone. If it goes into the spinal cord, it's gonna injure the spinal cord. And as we're looking at this hit here, essentially um, you can see right away that he grabbed his back. So he had immediate pain in his back. And you have to wonder, did he have a fracture in his back at that time? Did he pull a muscle? Um, like what happened? Why did he grab his back? And then all of a sudden he just laid on the ground he couldn't move his legs. And you, you'll hear that the, the reporter, um, the analyzer was mentioning that uh, they, he was surprised that he didn't, Ryan didn't move his legs either. So that was actually a really good foresight by that, uh, that commentator and that, the reporter who mentioned, who observed that and who, who observed him grabbing his back and also not moving his legs. So uh, essentially what Ryan Shazir had was a called, they called it a spinal cord contusion. Ryan actually first mentioned that he thought it was a stinger. And if you ever played sports, you most likely know what a stinger is, but essentially it's when your nerve gets a little bit, uh, goes to sleep a little bit and it has a weird sensation that may go down your arm or your leg. Um, and that usually resolves over time. But essentially this is what he thought he had at first. And when most people get injured, especially when the adrenaline is really high, your catecholamines are through the roof, which is your, like your norepinephrine, your epinephrine and dopamine, all those things. Well, you may not really appreciate the magnitude of the injury. You may kind of downplay it. Oh, I'll be okay. I probably can't move my legs because I'm just uh, freaking out right now. I'm in pain. But when all that thing, all those things settle down, then the realization hits in like, wow, this is crazy. This is this is deep. This is uh, this is pretty serious, and that's what he talked about essentially in his book. He talks about the 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 moment from the time that that he got hit, uh, from him going into the hospital and the doctors telling him that he probably wouldn't walk again. And he also mentioned that his wife uh, was really upset at the doctor because the doctor told his wife that he would never walk again, which is one of those things that um, it's a very highly debatable topic. Like how do we counsel patients when they have spinal cord injuries? When someone, even after surgery for, for an, a 
paralysis or weakness in their foot, like how do I counsel them as a spine surgeon? Will that weakness improve? Will they ever, ever be able to walk normal again? But the way I explain it to my patients is that if you imagine something that's pressing on the spinal cord or the nerve, something that's pressing on it, for, let's say for a degenerative problem or a chronic problem, let's say for six months or two years, you have a large disc herniation or a tumor or some type of fracture or bone that's pushing on it, and that spinal cord or the nerve can be injured, and sometimes it's irreversible. Sometimes the recovery process, the way the nerve or the spinal cord recovers, sometimes it never recovers because the damage gets to a point where it's ir irreversible. But sometimes if you get to it soon enough, you take the pressure off of the spinal cord very carefully. You remove the disc herniation, or in Ryan's case, which what they called it a blood clot. Uh, then you give that patient the best chance of recovery. What he had essentially, and what we kind of classify these types of spinal cord injuries in a kind of broad term is incomplete spinal cord injury or complete. Incomplete means you have some sort of sensation or uh, some parts of your spinal cord are still functional. Spinal cord injury, which is more serious, has a less chance of recovery. And that's when you have no sensation, no motor, which means you can't move your legs, you can't even do, you don't have any um, activity from your spinal cord, which is pretty serious. Ryan's spinal cord injury was, was deemed an incomplete spinal cord injury, and uh, the doctors actually told him that he had a 20% chance of walking again. They, some other doctors told his wife that he would never walk again. So, like, where do they get these numbers from? Like, how do you counsel a patient? Well, I think uh, there's, Lots of studies that have been done on this, but in my experience, and what one of the doctors kind of sat down with him and told him is that I don't like giving out percentages because percentages don't represent certain, a group of a patients, like a large group of patients. You know, what I, and what the doctor told Ryan and what I counsel my patients is, is that I'll do the best chance, or the, I'll do the best possible thing that I can do for you take the pressure off of it and we give it time and we wait, hopefully you will reg regain some recovery. I hate taking away essentially hope from patients. I'm not God. Uh, I went to school to learn and to educate and to teach and to operate and take care of patients, but patients will surprise you and God works in mysterious ways. So uh, I never will like tell a patient or try to remove that hope that they have. And that's essentially what Ryan was holding on to. He was holding on to hope, hopeful that he would walk again. Um, he was actually, he tells about the, uh, that he was diagnosed with scoliosis as a teenager. He had to wear a brace for a while. And it, his fracture that he had, he actually ended up having a fracture in his spine from that hit. It was actually at the apex of his scoliosis, which means was right at the curve which essentially placed him probably at a little bit more risk of injuring his spinal cord. If you imagine something, you're, you're going full force and then your spinal cord takes a hit, a big ding, it's gonna take time to recover. So he was essentially taking the surgery, I believe it was a few days later, and uh, they did a decompression, which means take away the pressure off of it from the blood clot that he had. The blood clot was most likely from the fracture, from the bones bleeding. It puts pressure on the spinal cord and you lose function. And um, he talks about the recovery process, which was really a challenging one for him because as an athlete, you're used to being out there. You're being out there with your teammates and up at 4.30 in the morning, he talked about getting up and uh, going to work out for two hours and then watching the film and then going to practice after that. So uh, you're used to a certain level of activity and lifestyle and then it's gone. So he talks about this recovery process and he also talks about some of the inequalities, the uh, disparities in medicine, because as a NFL athlete who most likely has some good insurance and also some capital to pay for extra physical therapy, extra recovery, extra um, you know, um, equipment that you use to get the best possible care. And he also what he, what he talks about, which really uh, stuck with me, is that he talks about that he recognized that were some patients that couldn't afford these opportunities or don't have these opportunities uh, and they have spinal cord injuries. And sometimes their insurance 
will cap their amount of visits at 30 visits where he did 130 visits for of therapy. So that was really interesting to read about the inequalities and the disparities in medicine and how some patients, they just don't have uh, the resources to get the best possible care. Because recovery after a spinal cord injury is essential, it's critical. The first 18 to 24 months uh, will essentially dictate how you recover and how how well your spinal cord will recover. That first, that first number of months, uh, that first year, year and a half after your injury. So it's critical that patients get the proper care. I also really enjoyed the parallels that he made between NFL and also his recovery process. So he would talk that he would imagine himself on the field during therapy and during recovery and he was, okay, I'm taking one step, that's a first down for me. I'm, I'm, t I'm walking out to the, the next room over here, that's a second down. So he would talk about just going through that mental process in his head of the recovery process and, and um, how he used his mentality, that grit, to overcome and an extremely you know, unforgivable uh, spinal injury. So what was really inspiring was to watch him walk at the, uh, the draft in 2018 and announced the uh, the pick for uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers you can see here 2018 he's still struggling but he's making progress and he's walking which some doctors they, they, they just took away his hope that he had uh, that and they told him that he would never walk again so and although there are some injuries to the spinal cord that are more serious than others and you know, it depends on a lot of different things, the type of injury, um, how, how long it took you to get to the hospital to get recovery and get treatment. Uh, but this is really amazing here. Someone who's paralyzed and was able to overcome that to be able to walk again. So the spinal cord can be unforgiving at times. It, it, it's one of those things that, you know, you, sometimes you just don't know how a patient's going to respond or how they're going to recover. And we haven't figured out, you know, how to reverse spinal cord injury yet. And they're looking at all different things, stem cells, um, hyperbaric oxygen chambers where they lower the atmosphere pressure. And he talks about some of that in the book. Uh, but we just haven't figured it out yet. And that's why I really enjoy the field of spine surgery because there are a lot of unknowns about spine surgery and spinal cord injury. But if you haven't checked out this book yet, Definitely check it out, A Walking Miracle by Ryan Shazir. It will really um, inspire you to just keep going no matter what. You know, what obstacle, what circumstance you're faced against, and just have that perseverance and that persistence and that grit to just keep going. This is Dr. Webb. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.